Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. This cold is in full effect, so please ignore my stuffy nose. This hidden figure is Marjorie Stewart, also known as Marjorie Joyner, who was born in 1896 in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia to parents who were descended from slaves. When she was a teenager, the family joined the Great Migration, moving to Chicago in 1912, and shortly thereafter, she began studying cosmetology. She graduated from A.B. Moeller Beauty School in Chicago in 1916, becoming the first Black American to achieve this. That year, at the age of 20, she married podiatrist Robert E. Joyner and opened her salon. Wishing to improve her technique on the Marcel Wave, a flat, ribbony, crimp style made famous by jazz singer Josephine Baker, Joyner attended a class taught by Madam C.J. Walker on working with Black people's hair. When Walker observed Joyner demonstrating some of her work using the Marcel Wave, she offered Joyner a job, and in 1919, Joyner became part of her demonstration team that traveled the country teaching hair techniques. Joyner went to work for her and oversaw 200 of Madam Walker's beauty schools as the vice president and national advisor of the salon division. Eventually, she was picked for a seat on the board of directors, and a major role was sending Walker's hairstylist door to door, dressed in black skirts and white blouses with black satchels containing a range of beauty products that were applied in the customer's home. Joyner taught some 15,000 stylists over her 50-year career. She was also a leader in developing new products, such as her permanent wave machine. Joyner's personal experience in a salon, working with the Marcel Wave in particular, led to her recognizing a problem that needed to be solved. Anything involving the hair iron was a time-intensive task. Whether heating to straighten or heating to curl the hair, it could only be done one curling iron in one section of hair at a time. Joyner was fixing pot roast one day and was thinking about the long, thin rods that were inserted into the pot roast to hold the meat together, which also served the purpose of heating the meat from the inside. This gave her an idea. What if you could create a device that used many curling irons that could work simultaneously? Then the process could be accomplished in less time for both the beautician and the customer. Joyner began to experiment. She hooked 16 pencil-shaped pot roast rods to an old-fashioned hair dryer hood and then joined them together with a single electrical cord and began to examine how they could be designed to function simultaneously. By 1928, she had perfected her invention, known as the permanent wave machine, a device that could set an entire head of curls at the same time. When asked by others how she came up with such an idea, Joyner said, if I can take pot roast rods and have a one-of-a-kind invention, believe me, people can do what they set their minds to. Initial sales of the machine were good, but there were complaints, and Joyner listened. Women found that the hot iron sometimes touched and burned or pinched their scalps, so Joyner set to work again and patented a scalp protector to make the procedure less painful. Although Marjorie Joyner was often honored for her invention, she never derived income from it. Since she was an employee of Madam C.J. Walker's company at the time the invention was created and patented, ownership of the patents belonged to the Walker Company, and Madam C.J. Walker received all of the funds from the sales of the invention. This is the second time I have heard some uh, shady stuff about Madam C.J. Walker. I'm just throwing that out there. Marjorie Joyner also helped write the first cosmetology laws for the state of Illinois, and in 1945, Joyner and her friend Mary McLeod Bethune, president of Bethune-Cookman College in Daytona, Florida, co-founded an association for beauty school owners and teachers, now known as Alpha Chi Pi Omega. Joyner was also friends with Eleanor Roosevelt and helped found the National Council of Negro Women. She was an advisor to the Democratic National Committee in the 1940s and advised several New Deal agencies trying to reach out to black women. Joyner was highly visible in the Chicago black community as head of the Chicago Defender Charity Network and fundraiser for various schools. In 1987, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington opened an exhibit featuring Joyner's permanent wave machine and a replica of her original salon. In 1973, at the age of 77, Margaret Stewart Joyner fulfilled another lifelong dream. She attended Bethune-Cookman College and earned a B.S. in psychology. 
Marjorie Stewart Joyner died of heart failure at her Southside Chicago home on December 27, 1994, at the age of 98. Margaret Joyner, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.